Hello and welcome to the Comlex and USMLE Instant Review. This podcast is going to cover genetics and pediatrics. I want to start and talk about CHARGE association. And CHARGE stands for coloboma, which has an isolated iris to anophthalmos, and the retinal is the most common type here. Heart defects, atresia coena, retardation of growth, genital hypoplasia, especially in males, and ear anomalies or deafness. And that's a common asked board review association charge. What about prune belly syndrome? In prune belly syndrome, remember genitary urinary defects along with uh, absence of wall muscles of the abdomen. So no abdominal wall muscles plus GU problems and uh, crypt orchidism. So those were the three associations you should make with prune belly syndrome in addition to remembering that most of the patients with prune belly syndrome are male. How about uh, putz jager syndrome? This is an autosomal dominant uh, condition and patients here will present with pigmentation and polyps, most likely blue, gray, or brownish spots on the lips, oral mucosa, um, and they can be found in the jejunum as one of the uh, most important locations and they appear in uh, early childhood also with clubbing of the fingers so patients have clubbing of fingers patients have uh, these pigmentation and polyps and patients have uh, autosomal dominant um, condition next we want to talk about leopard syndrome, the multiple lentiginous syndrome. And these lentigenes are one to five millimeter dark spots on the neck and the trunk. And there is an increase with the number of age. So patients have uh, EKG abnormalities, ocular um, problems, uh, pulmonary stenosis, uh, the retardation of growth, deafness, along with um, hypogonadism and crypt orchidism. Really the key finding you want to focus on are these lentigenes, uh, the dermatological condition, that are not related to sunlight but they do increase with age. So charge syndrome, prune belly, putz jagers uh, syndrome, and leopard syndrome for multiple lentiginous syndrome are some of the important uh, genetical pediatric conditions. What about uh, Rett's syndrome? Well, Rett's syndrome is X-linked. And what are some of the most important findings patients have in Rett's syndrome? Well, the highest uh, yield association is the midline hand ringing. So patients will come in with the loss of uh, any purposeful movement. They have excessive sighing, um, ataxia may be seen, and patients will also have microcephaly. So those are the important characteristics of patients with Rett syndrome. Now what about um, Asperger's syndrome? Well with Asperger's syndrome some of the most important characteristics include the point that Asperger's syndrome does not have language impairments that autism has. So Autism has language impairments, but Asperger's does not. And also remember that the therapy to treat patients with Asperger's is group social skills training. And that's a key point to remember. Next, want to focus on patients with Asperger's present with restricted or uh, obsessive compulsive behaviors uh, that are idiosyncratic and strange in behavior. They also seem to have a higher functioning form than autism, but they're at risk for several uh, psychiatric conditions as well. So if the board exam talks to you about a patient who has peculiar behavior with uh, restricted um, social interactions and they have um, a mood disorder but they don't present with severe language impairment then you're going to select 
Asperger's as your diagnosis. Now what about autism and what are some of the high yield points for autism that you should remember for the COMLEX and USMLE? The most important point is to start off with the age in the definition and that is it develops before 36 months. So it's less than 36 months that it starts and it's a impairment in verbal, nonverbal, and in social interactions. So both patients have verbal, nonverbal, as well as um, the social interaction skills that are not functioning properly. How do you diagnose the patient with autism? Well, it's mainly clinical. It's not caused by an MMR vaccine and patients who come in will show signs of anger outbursts, self-injury, patients will have a delayed social smile, failure to attach as an infant, um, patients can anticipate interactions, they have a delay in verbal and nonverbal skills, and you can use the checklist for autism in toddlers which is the chat um, list in order to diagnose patients with autism. So chat is the um, checklist to use to make the early diagnosis. And what about um, the treatment? It mainly depends on behavioral therapy. So interventions in uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, patients can have psychotherapy, social interaction skills, all of these can help um, give the patient a higher level of functioning. And those with speech um, problems may have self-sufficient employed lives, but they remain isolated. And also, there's no increased risk for adult schizophrenia in patients who have autism. Now, patients who present with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Syndrome, ADHD, there's a specific DSM-4 uh, diagnosis which says that inattention poor impulse control, motor activity um, that's excessive and restlessness in addition to uh, these symptoms causing a severe impairment in a child's um, circumstances in several instances with it occurring in children who are less than seven years old for more than six months now that's considered to be most likely attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And there's several types. There is a hyperactive impulsive type or there's the inattentive type or it can have a combined uh, appearance in patients. The diagnosis is clinical. Um, however, you should exclude um, several things such as illness or sleep disorders, uh, depression or anxiety, etc. And Patients who uh, do show signs can benefit from a behavior rating scale, but they're not sufficient alone to make the diagnosis. To treat the patient, on the board exam, first line should be psychosocial interventions, and second line should be behavioral management. Um, in addition, stimulants like methylphenidate or amphetamine can be used, and all of these are equally effective, but the patient may respond differently. So methylphenidate and amphetamine. Moreover, tricyclic antidepressants and bupropion as a second line agent have been beneficial to patients. And selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors like atomoxetine, which is very effective and has actually less side effects. So medication review will include atomoxetine, methylphenidate, or amphetamine, along with TCAs, all of these could be possible answer choices, and clonidine. And that was a board review for the COMLEX and USMLE on several high yield pediatric genetic and child and adolescent development topics. Please visit comlexflashcard.com for additional board review lectures and podcasts. Good luck in your preparation and thank you for listening.